<laughs> That's choice. Okay, Chad. We get your weird. <laughs> what is soy? Sus and moist. Yep. Me and my friends have a thing about that. Yeah, I can tell. Are you going to school? Oh, uh, yes. Yes, because he's at school. So. Yeah. <laughs> And hopefully you will not have to look at it in reverse um, shape. So I'll see if I can, we'll see how the screen does if I turn it around. Obviously y'all know there's gonna be a lot of noise because everybody's coming in and getting settled. So um, give me a few minutes. If y'all have trouble seeing anything, be sure to let me know and I'll try to adjust. I'm trying to not, I'm trying to keep the lights on and not go through the projector. So that means I'm just gonna use the iPad um and see if that works okay so if y'all need anything i just need y'all to unmute and yell at me and i will um assist okay all right let's see if i can turn this screen around okay here we go i don't okay that works let's go this way Go ahead and get out your homework. We saw her one Okay. Let's see. That needs to go that way. So ah. Let me figure out. That makes it better. It can go and you know I I'll slide behind y'all real quick. There we go. That's still not gonna be high enough. Um, what can I use? Let me find something. Hang on. <laughs> Oh, hi, Micah. Oh, is my phone on? Yeah, I got it. Is he sick again? His head's going for some reason. Micah. Okay, let me stack it up for just a minute. Go ahead and get out your homework. I'm going to check that first. Oh, we get to do systems of directing. Well, that's not going to work either. Okay, sorry guys, I cannot seem to get the thing high enough to um, use the reverse or use the other camera. So we're just going to have to be back. Sorry. I know I like I Oh, Send you the grid squares that we're using in class today if you need some. Hold on just a minute. Um, 
Well, <laughs> nice. I know I got this one wrong. She was the best one, and I couldn't say that. Okay. Three. Oh, I so our homework. Our first bit of homework was on page, let's see, it was 126 from lesson 50, no, it was lesson 124, and that's from lesson 56. Okay, so we had six problems from lesson 56. Three problems from the other. Good. You don't have to anymore. <laughs> well, good. Um, did, we, did we talk about that? That we had our notes that we were taking in class? Yeah, mine are right there. Okay, looking for 56 and 55. Huh? You didn't do it. I mean, I do yeah. I didn't do it really well. Yeah, it's not always. Yeah. 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 Are you cold? Yeah. I'm cold. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like right by my face. So I don't know if they would the book. So remember, I've, I've been specific on telling you guys which ones need to be in the book and which ones need to be on paper. All right. So, um, All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at these. Is there or any of them that you missed that you would like me to rework? I'll be happy to or to work for you. All right, so we did the first one in class. And so we have six problems that start with the second problem on the top row, okay? So the first one, the solution is negative nine, positive nine. The second one, which is technically the third one in the top row, um, the solution is two, three. After that is one, two. Any questions on the top row? All right, bottom row, the first three, which is four, five, and six. So number four is negative three, four. Number five is negative nine, negative eight. And number six is five, seven. Any of those you would like me to work? Any questions on those? Okay, I hope you went ahead and marked them at the top of your paper, write minus however many. This is kind of an exercise on what you're, what you kind of are, are working on. So we just check those. If you missed any at the top of your page, put minus however many. Now, part of your homework tonight is going to be to make those corrections, okay? And you will be handing this in on Thursday. So make sure you make your corrections. Oh, I need you to put that away. Um, make your corrections and this is due on Thursday. All right, now let's go ahead and turn to lesson 58. We had three in activities two. Zoe. So, okay. Number one, my solution is negative two, three. Number two, one, four. And number three, three, negative one. Go ahead and mark any that you missed. Write however many you missed at the top. You know those need to be done for corrections. I'm sorry. The first one was negative two, three. Like if I got one of my books minus one. Yeah, so at the top of your page, if you missed one, you have minus one, circle it. You know, those are the corrections you need to make as part of your homework tonight. This will be taken up on Thursday on notebook paper, okay? So it is due Thursday. The homework that we have tonight, we will check on Thursday, but then it'll be due the next Monday. Okay, so that's going to be how we're kind of working on this because I want to be able to help you with corrections if needed. I want to be able to work them on the board to help you if needed, but also um, so if you have corrections to make, if you do not have corrections to make and you want to turn it in today, you're welcome to give it to me at the break. Okay, so at the break, I'll collect it. If you don't have corrections to be made, if you do have corrections to be made, they'll be due on Thursday. Any questions about that? What were the last two questions about this? The last two have um, one four and three negative one. All right, so 
Let's do a quick review of what we've kind of been talking about. We have been dealing with systems of equations. And when, when I have a system of equations, how many have we been dealing with? How many equations do we have in our systems? Two. Two. We have two linear equations. What does that mean when I say linear equations? For like, um, for lines. They would be graphed as a line on a graph. Exactly. I have an ordered pair solution because I have two variables, X and Y. Okay. So when I solve, I can find a, a solution for X and a solution for Y. And they're called linear equations because they have to be graphed as a line. Okay. Because there are multiple solutions. Now, there are multiple solutions for the first equation. There are multiple solutions for the second equation. But when I solve my system, I typically only get one solution. And what does that one solution tell me about those two lines? Whether they're intersecting or not. Exactly, about whether, about intersection. So if I have one ordered pair solution, then I know that those two lines have intersected somewhere. And that is the one point where they both share the common point. Okay, so first equation has an infinite number of solutions. Second equation has an infinite number of solutions. But when I solve it as a system, I have an ordered pair solution. So that means they intersect at one place. What if I have an infinite number of solutions for both of them? What do I know about those two lines? What do we say that if I end up solving and I have three equals three or zero equals zero or negative 12 equals negative 12? So they're parallel and they wouldn't have not parallel. If all of their solutions are, are, are the same, then my solution is all real, um, all real numbers. All real numbers. Let me grab a marker. And that means that they lie on top of each other. Okay. That means that if I were to graph them, they are exactly the same line on the graph. That's what they mean if I have a true statement. And that's one of the things that we looked at the other day um, with, I guess it was the, the fourth one. And lesson 58 activities two. Remember how we ended up and it said we when we solved that when it said zero equals zero and we said because I ended up with a true statement. Then my solution was all real numbers as my solution. Now, if I get to a point where I have something equals something and it's a false statement and it is not a true statement, then what does that mean Zoe if it's a false statement. Uh -oh. That means my no lines solution. do not do what? No solution. Which no solution. They do not intersect, which would be perpendicular. not perpendicular, parallel. parallel that's yeah, they're parallel lines because they never intersect. And so that would be if I ended up solving just like with number the, the um, did we have one of those? Um, where we had a no solution. Wasn't that in the class work? I was thinking we had seen a no solution somewhere, but I guess not. All right. So today, since we've been talking about these and we've been talking about how this is what they look like on a coordinate grid, guess what we get to do today? We had an all real numbers and activities too. I was gonna say, I know we had an all real numbers, but I couldn't remember if we had a no solution somewhere. Well, I thought we were going to have a no solution. Because remember, yeah. we were like, I was thinking there was something. Me, there was one question we thought was yeah. it, and then it didn't yeah. end up being the all real numbers. Yeah. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and turn to lesson 59. We are going to graph, and I do have some grid squares if you need them. If you have your own graph paper, you are welcome to use it. If you have graph squares left over, you're welcome to use those. To if you need more, I have graphing papers questions, mm -hmm. but these are the two groups. Yes, yes, yes. And you guys, I emailed y'all these so you can print them out um, if you need them. Of uh, the people on Zoom, I emailed them. You know what I need to do? I'm going to run next door and get my grid to put on this board. So hold tight for a sec. Bye. Yeah. See y'all tomorrow. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. What? First thing she does part of the letter. What do we want to cycle the fire? Okay, pyromania, calm down. Have you seen the gold? Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah, I don't want to start that my history. Uh, to that part where it goes, like, I think the third soul, soul movie, or I think the third soul movie. I've heard. 
the top so you could stick it in that would be awesome if we had and i guess technically there's a court board back there but i don't want to make everybody turn around so all right so lesson 59 it says graphing linear systems is simply graphing multiple lines on the same cartesian plane the points at which the lines intersect is the solution of the linear system one of the things i don't like about this book is like that would have been super helpful to tell you guys in the very beginning that hey the whole purpose of solving these yeah. two equations is telling us where these intersect but you know, whatever. So yeah, so that's why I tried to make sure to bring it up as we've been going on. Okay, so it says I'm solving the system of equations by graphing. Now remember, we've talked about how when I have systems of equations, I might be able to solve by um, substitution. I can solve both of them for y, I can substitute and solve. Um, maybe I can add and eliminate terms, eliminate opposites. And remember, we talked about how when I'm adding to eliminate, that means I could look and I could actually take a subtraction problem and turn it into adding the opposite. I can multiply one or two equations by a term to make opposites and then be able to add. Or I can divide one or two of my equations by something to be able to have opposites to be able to add. Oh, thank you. All right. <laughs> He's in training particularly. <laughs> it was so funny last night. My daughter and I we were driving back from Georgia. Um, we went through a, a McDonald's and the lady was super friendly. And my daughter goes, That is the nicest McDonald's person I've ever heard before. <laughs> yeah. It was so funny, but she was. She was super friendly. <laughs> You you get to where you expect it, or you know, it's, it's a given. Like, <laughs> yeah, sometimes Thank you. I need to post one of the every once in a while. It's like, how's your day going? Yes. That one was like up early when I wear it. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look. And in the book, Okay. So notice it says um, we have our systems and it says um, graph both lines on the same Cartesian plane. So let's start there for a moment. All right. Um, hmm. Well, how do I graph a line? Huh? You graph it? How do you know what points to graph? The points so are given by order pair. The problem. I've got to have ordered pairs to be able to graph points, don't I? It's like a phantom. Look back at lesson 30 for a minute. Flip mm -hmm. back to lesson oh, 30. Oh, wow. What did we learn how to do in lesson 30? Make our own pairs. Set up our oh. tables, okay? Oh, okay. So the first thing I need to do, lesson 30 told us to set up a table. We plug in values for X to solve for Y, right? Set up table with values for X and solve for Y. So that's gonna be the first thing I've got to do is I've got to set up a table. Um, it, it will be helpful for you and, and you can just make a note in your book like you can see how I've written in mine I just put a little note and it just says you know set up table lesson 30. And that way I know the first thing I've got to do set up a table. Okay. 
Then, so that's step one. Step two, I graph ordered pairs for each line. And then step three, look to see if lines intersect. And then I'm gonna have a note here. If they intersect, like ordered pair solution. If lines are parallel, remember that means they have the same slope. Same slopes, no solution. If lines lie on top of each other, same lines, so all real number solution. So step one, I'm setting up my table. Step two, I graph the ordered pairs for each line. Step three, I look to see if the lines intersect. And if they do intersect, then my solution is that ordered pair. If they do not intersect because they're parallel lines, my solution is no solution. If my lines lie directly on one another, then my solution is all real numbers. All right, so what we're gonna do is let's go ahead and look at the example because they don't do this for us in the example. So let's look at the example that they've given us in the book. And my first equation is 3x plus 2y minus 4 equals 0. 3x plus 2y minus 4 equals 0. Now, you can or cannot start off by um, using standard form. Okay, so if you want to plug it in, you can. If not, you can just leave it like this. All right, so think about the first thing I'm going to do is I have my values of x. My equation is 3x plus 2y minus 4 equals 0. And then I've got to solve for y. Okay. So remember I talked about how, and what we'll do in these is we'll only use 3. Because remember we talked about how I really only need two ordered pairs to um, make a line. 3 is the best, is minimum, to, to, to really get a, make sure your line is going in the right direction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use negative one, zero, and positive one. Okay, I'm gonna put in three um, values for X, negative one, zero, positive one, because they're smaller numbers, it's gonna be easier to work with. So this, I'll have three times negative one plus two Y minus four equals zero. What is three times negative one? Negative three. That'll be negative three plus 2y minus 4 equals 0. I need to combine my like terms. I have negative 3 and negative 4 when I combine, okay? When I combine those, I've got negative 7 plus 2y equals 0. Now, one of the things I can see here is what's going to be my problem. Is this one going to work out evenly? I'm going to end up with a fraction. So one of the things that we need to do is when I have 3, I've got to pick three that work, okay? And so one of the things that I've got to look at, um, all right. So what I've got to do is I'm gonna have to keep working until I get three that make a, a, an ordered pair that works, okay? So basically I'm gonna have two y equals seven divided by two divided by two y equals seven divided by two, which is gonna be what, three and a half? 
Now, if you wanted to graph that, you could. Okay, so if I wanted negative one, three and a half. So basically that means I start at my origin. I go left one and I'm gonna go up one, two, three, but it would be right there as a half. So as long as you've got either a whole number or a half number, it's gonna be okay to graph. So we'll go ahead and let that one go. Let's go ahead and put in one. Three, one, that's a zero. Three times zero plus two y minus four equals zero. So three times zero is zero. So now I have two y minus four equals zero. Add four, add four, two y equals four. Divide by two, divide by two, y equals two. So if x is zero, y is two. So I'll go graph that one. If x is zero, y is two. Now, seeing these first two, I can kind of get an idea of where my graph is going. I can kind of see a trajectory. So I can see when I pick a number, if I stay pretty close in here, I'm gonna be able to find that third value. I'm just gonna go ahead and use a positive one. So three times one plus two y minus four equals zero. Three times one is three plus two y minus four equals zero. Three minus four, negative one plus two y equals zero. Add one, add one, two y equals one, divide by two, divide by two, and y equals one half. So if x is one, y is one half. So again, now I'm gonna go right one and up one half, okay? So now what I'm gonna look at is I'm gonna go ahead and <coughs> let you graph that line. Not perfect, but close enough. So that's for my first equation. For my second equation, I'll put over on this side, we have x plus 3y plus 1 equals 0. So I'm going to set up. All right. Now, one of the things I'll tell you is as you work with these, you can kind of start looking. Notice that when I put in odd numbers here, I ended up with fractions. Just for fun, okay, because math is fun, right? Let's plug in an even number and see how that would have changed things. If I would have put in um, a two, three times two minus two y minus four equals zero. Six minus two y minus four equals zero. Six minus four is negative two minus two y equals zero. Add two, add two. Negative two y equals two, divide by negative two, divide by negative two and y equals negative one. So two, negative one. If you find, you can kind of start looking at patterns and that helps you to see, do I need to have odds? Do I need to have evens? How's it gonna divide out? So that's all part of working with it and learning about graphing. So in that one, I would have two, one. So see how, um, where, oh, two, negative one. One, two, down one. So we can see how my graph was a little off right there. Okay. So see, the more you more ordered pairs you have, the better your graph is going to be to be able to look at those. All right. So now what we're going to do is let's go ahead and look at our next equation. I'm going to try negative one. So I have negative one plus three y plus one equals zero. Negative one plus one is zero. So I have three y equals zero divided by three divided by three. So what is y? Zero. 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 So my ordered pair, if X is negative one, Y is zero. So I've got negative one, zero. So it's gonna be right there. Go ahead and put in zero. Zero plus three Y plus one equals zero. So three Y plus one equals zero. Subtract one, subtract one. Three Y equals negative one, divide by three, divide by three y equals negative one third. I don't want to use that one, okay? I'm good with graphing a whole number and a half, but that one's just kind of out. I'm going to have to pick another one to be able to work. Um, let's put in a positive one. One plus three y plus one. What am I going to see? What am I, what, what can I already, what should I already be able to tell right here? 
This is going to be two. I'm going to move it over here and I'm going to end up with two thirds. So I'm going to keep going. Let's go with a positive two. So I have two plus three y plus one equals zero. What should you be able to tell right here? What are you going to end up having on this side over here when I move that two plus one? Three. I'm going to have a negative three and I can work with that here. Okay, so I'm going to have two plus one is three plus three y equals zero. Subtract three, subtract three. Three y equals negative three divided by three divided by three. Y equals negative one. So now I have put y equals y. Y equals it does look like y <laughs> negative one. Okay, so I have two negative one. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and erase this just for the sake of space, where I had to forget about zero. And let's go ahead since two worked. Um, what's gonna happen if I put it in negative two? What's negative two plus one? Three, one, one. It's going to be a one. I'm still going to be in that same situation where I'm having to divide by three. Remember, whatever number I have on this side needs to be able to be divided by three. What could I make my x value that could be added to one and could be divided by three? Negative three. Negative three. If I had negative three plus one, what is that going to be? Negative two, so that's not going to work. Negative four. Negative four would work, so let's plug that one in. Negative four. Negative four plus three y plus one equals zero. So negative four plus one is negative three plus three y equals zero. Add three, add three, three y equals three. Divide by three, divide by three, and y equals one. So negative four, positive one. So we already had two negative one. So I would go one, two. Oh, wow, looky there. I plotted a point on top of another point. Is that legal? Is it is legal, legal because we're gonna, that's actually, that's my legal answer. So I'm gonna have negative four, one. I'm gonna start the um, origin, one, two, three, four, one. So when I draw this line, that is where they intersect. That point of intersection, that two negative one, that common ordered pair is my solution. So basically this whole time that we've been solving solutions, this is what we've been doing, but this is a visual representation of what we've been doing. So each time we have solved and we said our solution is two negative one. So each time I call out an answer for a solution to order pairs, this is what it looks like on a graph. I graph one line, I graph the other, and my intersection point is my solution, okay? So we can see in the book, the solution point was two negative one, okay? But one of two things. So notice, I could set up a table. This was kind of tedious, wasn't it? It kind of took some time. It took a lot of thinking about to get our numbers right. There were some that worked, some that didn't. What else do we know about graphing lines? So, um, graphing lines. We can one, set up a table. What's another way we can graph a line? What was another way that we used to graph lines? What, um, if I don't have ordered pairs, what the origin? Okay. The slope. Stop. The slope. What else do I need to have with slope to be able to graph a line? Y equals mx plus b. So think about if I have y equals mx plus b. Remember, b is my y-intercept, so that's an ordered pair, right? X is always zero and whatever my value of B is, that's what my Y intercept where my line crosses over the Y axis. The slope tells me from this point, am I going up and right, up and left, down and right, down and left. So if I can solve for slope intercept form, that's gonna be a whole lot easier than having to go through all this, okay? But if I look at this problem here, 
I can't solve this for slope intercept form because I have a two and a three. I have odd num. I mean, I have opposite. I mean, I have an even and an odd. So there's nothing I can divide each of those by to be able to get. Same thing here. To be able to get y by itself here, I'm having to divide by three. So I'm having to look at different options to be able to graph my lines. So the first one is going to be setting up tables. Okay. Now, one thing to always remember though, um, typically I want to try to keep my numbers as small and as close together as possible, but sometimes I have to get with different numbers to be able to figure out what to graph. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and let's look at classwork one and we're going to solve this one using step two. So under that, underneath lesson one, underneath step one, if you wrote, wrote that, too many notes to do that, if you want to plug in, you can say, um, or solve for y equals mx plus b. So we've got two options for step one here. I can either set up a table or I can use slope intercept form. So that's what we're going to do with lesson with classwork one. I'm going to erase this. <laughs> All right, so page 129, classwork one. You can do this in your book. I have to do it on this. Okay, the first one I have negative 4x plus y equals, I'm sorry, plus negative four X plus Y minus six equals zero. And I have three X minus Y plus five equals zero. The first thing I look and I see Y is by itself. This one has a negative, so I know I'm gonna have to deal with that, but that's much easier than having to set up a table. I know I can solve each of these for Y. So we're gonna start with the first one. Negative four X plus Y minus B, that's a six, not a B. Equals zero. Equals six. Equals. So the first thing I'm going to do, if I'm solving for y, what needs to move away from y? What needs to move for y to be by itself? Six. Oh, Both of these, right? So I know I need to add 4x and add 6. I can do this all in one step. So if I add 4x and add 6 on this side, I have to add 4x and add 6 on this side. So y equals 4x plus 6. What is my y intercept? 0, 6. 0, 6. What is my slope? 4. 4. Remember, that's the same as 4 over 1. So that means I can either go up 4 and right 1, or if I have negative 4 over negative 1, I go down 4 and left 1. OK, those are my options. When I graph my point, what I'm going to do. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So my first one, I'm graphing my y intercept 0, 6. Start at 0 and go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now I'm using my slope 4 over 1, so I can go up 4, right 1. One, two, three, four, one. Or I can go down four, left one. One, two, three, four, one. One, two, three, four, one. One, two, three, four, one. So that gives me a really good idea of what my line is. Notice it's a pretty steep line. The larger my slope, the steeper the line. Okay, so this is a slope of four. What is the B? All right, now my next one, 3x minus y plus 5 equals 0. It needs to move from the left to the right. So it needs to move from the left side to go to the right side. 3x and 5. 3x. 3x and 5. What kind of number is 3x? It's positive. How do I move it? I've got to subtract it, so I'm subtracting 3x. 5 is positive, so I have to subtract it. Do the same thing on this side. 
So now I have negative y is equal to negative 3x minus 5. I need y to be positive. So what does that mean I have to do to every single term? It's the same as multiplying everything by negative one. So I have y equals 3x plus five, because if I multiply everything by negative one to change the sign of y, I change the sign of negative 3x and negative five. So now it's positive 3x plus five. What is my y-intercept? Zero, 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 five. What is my slope? Three over one or good. So when I graph my ordered pair, zero, five, I can go up three, right one, or down three, left one. So we're gonna start with graphing zero, five. So I have zero, one, two, three, four, five. And then I'm gonna go up three, right one. One, two, three, one. One, two, three, one, or I can go down three, one, two, three, one. Uh -huh. One, two, three, one. One, two, three, one. So we can see that my lines are super close. Wait, mine did not look like that. Okay. I wish I had a different color marker with me. Oh, do, you Actually, do they cross? They do cross at that one point. Okay. I actually had two points across. So notice these two were super close. But also notice what is the slope of this line? If the slope of this one is four and this one's three, those slopes are going to be pretty close together. It's not like I have a slope of three and a slope of negative five. Okay. So because my slopes are super close, and what I'll do is I'll go ahead and redraw this one. Oh, I got it now. Oh, actually, it's just erasing that. <laughs> that doesn't work. Well, I guess that one's dried out. Okay, never mind. Good try. There's a little box. So again, right here is where they intersect. What is that ordered pair? If this is my origin, I've got negative one up two. So my solution is negative one, two. Negative one, two. Yeah, so I mean, it's well, think about so negative one, two means I'm going to the left one and up two should be. Yeah, so it looks like okay, so. Somewhere our ordered pairs are off. So where was zero six? Zero six is actually the upper part of one, two, six. And that one, two, three, four, five, six. So right at here at the arrow, at the tip of the arrow would be six. No, it, it, if it's zero six, it means I stay at the origin. I do not go right or left. And then I go up six, okay. one, two, three, four, five, six. So my point would be right here at the tip of that arrow. So graph that. Put a dot right above that. There you go. So there's zero six. And my slope, where did you write your slope down? No, but where did you write your slope? Okay, so you've got four, one, or negative four, negative one. Obviously, I cannot go up four, so I'm going to go down one, two, three, four, and then I'm going to go right one. Or what? No, I'm sorry, we went down, so it's got to go left. So we'll raise that. So one, two, three, four, one. Go down one, two, three, four, one. Okay. Yeah, so it's just a matter of regraphing your lines and then you've got to graph the order pair for the next one. Okay, so that's the main thing is you've got to make sure, you've got to make sure that you have graphed your um, ordered pair correctly. Make sure you do your slope correctly, okay? Now, um, let's go ahead and take a look at activities two for a minute. Look at our equations in activities two. Look at the first one. Can I solve the very first equation for y? Is everybody with me? I'm in activities two, this very first equation right here. 
2x plus y minus 5 equals 0. Can I solve for y? No. Yeah. No. Yeah. 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 No. Yeah. no. Yeah. Do you remember? Do y'all remember if, if y is by itself, can I solve for y? Yes. 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 I can solve for y if y is by itself. If I have 2x plus y minus 5 equals 0, is y by itself? Yes. Yeah. Y is by itself, so I can solve that one for y. So actually, in activities two, I'm going to do a combination here. Uh -oh. Ooh, I can cool. do my first one like I did this. But my second one, I'm going to have to set up a table. OK, so I'm going to have to use both methods depending on can I solve one for y. So let's go ahead and take a look. We're on 129 activities two on this one. You're going to need to make sure you're following along with your graph squares. All right. So the first one we have 2x plus y minus 5 equals 0. 2x plus 5y. No, it's not 2x y. plus y minus it's 5 equals zero. equals 0. So let's start with this one. I can solve for y. What do I need to move on the left? 2x and negative 5. How am I going to move 2x? Subtract 2x. How am I going to move negative 5? Add it. Add it. Good. If it's positive, I subtract. If it's negative, I add. Minus 2x plus 5. So I have y is equal to negative 2x plus 5. What is my y-intercept? 0, 5. Zero. Five. What is my slope? Negative two. Negative two over one, which means I'm going to go down two and right one. Or I can have two over negative one, which means I go up two and left one. So now go to a graph and let's go ahead and graph zero five. I start at my origin. I do not go right or left and I just go up five. One, two, three, four, five. If you want to label it, you're more than welcome to. Sometimes it gets in the way of your other graphs, though. So I've got zero, five. Now I can either go down two, right one. Go down two, right one, down two, right one, down two, right one. Or I can go up two, left one, up two, left one. As many dots as you want to be comfortable. And graph that. There. Is everybody comfortable with that so far? Yes. All right. So our next equation is x plus 3y minus 5 equals 0. x plus 3y minus 5 equals 0. x x plus 3y minus 5 equals 0. x and y solution. Right now we're going to solve for the table. X. We, have to, we have to set up, because remember, if I solve for x, I, I still don't know anything, OK? I mean, I guess um, if I solve for x, I can see if I've got 3 and 5, and I know I'm going to have a fraction, OK? Because I'm going to have to divide by 3 to get y to solve. I could solve for my x-intercept, and the x-intercept is just where it intersects the x-axis, but that's not going to be the best thing in this situation. I need to go ahead and set up my table. All right, so think about this. A little bit ago, when we were testing out numbers and we found that some worked and some did not, what were the things I had to think about about which ones worked and which ones didn't? Uh, negatives and positives. Looking, thinking about negatives and positives. What do I know I'm going to have to get y? What am I going to have to do to get y by itself? Divide, Divide by what? Three. So I need whatever x ends up being here, whatever is over here, has to be divisible by 3. So think about numbers that are divisible by 3. I'm thinking, you know, 6, 9, 0 will work because 0 divided by 3 is 0. So I know 0 is going to work. What could I add to negative 5 to make 0? Five. A positive five. Okay. I could get rid of those by doing. Oh, if I used five, and in this situation, we're not going to worry about them being in order. 
I'm just trying to figure out the easiest way to solve for Y in the situation. Yes. Why can't we just do it like we did the last problem by Y? Because, because Y has a three. Because it has a three in front of it. I know, why don't we just divide it by two? Then? Because then I'd have to divide five by three. Oh. And that doesn't make a, a, an even easy number to deal with, okay? So if I use five here, then I have five plus three Y minus five mm -hmm. equals zero. Go ahead and take a break and we'll come back and finish this one. Yes. Thank you. Do you want my homework? Yeah, if you're ready to turn it in, you can turn it in. Yeah. 
<laughs> I noticed. Do not. Yeah, I thought we were going over. I don't know. It's not behind my chair. I cannot believe it. It's a good feeling, but, you know, we kind of, I mean, we all know what it is. Oh, Sam. Oh. Oh. numbers to use as my values of x i'm having to kind of think ahead okay it, it it is less work i'm not having to do as much trial and error and plugging in numbers and getting the wrong thing and having to pick another one if i can go ahead and think ahead in this situation so what i'm trying to look at here is i'm trying to see um what number i need to plug in for x that will since i'm having to divide by three to get y by itself I know I'm going to have to have a value that is divisible by three. So we said in this situation, I know I can divide zero by three because zero divided by anything is zero. 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 Okay, so in this situation, five minus five is zero. So I have three y equals zero divided by three divided by three y equals zero. So my ordered pair is five zero for one of them. All right. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look and think about um, what other number could I put here? What if I put um, a one here? What is one minus five? Zero. 
Negative, negative four. Negative four. Is that going to be divisible by three? No. No. What if I put a negative one here? What's negative one minus five? Negative six. Is that divisible by three? Yeah. Yeah. So let's go negative one. Negative one plus three y minus five equals zero. So negative one and negative five is negative six plus three y equals zero. Add six to each side. Three y equals six. Divide by three. Divide by three. Y equals two. So negative one, positive two. And I tell you what, let's go ahead and start graphing these because then once I find a place that I'm good with, and it may even be that I find that I've got an ordered pair that overlaps. All right, so I've got five zero. So I start here. Now remember, since X is five, that means I have to go to the right five. One, two, three, four, five, but I do not go up or down. One, two, three, four, five, I jump. Five zero. Then I have negative one, positive two. So negative one up two. Okay. Now, if you notice that these are the two points I have graphed, what makes sense as the point that is going to overlap? Uh, okay, so I've got these two points graphed. I can see clearly that I've got a point right here. So I'm gonna test that one and make sure it's true. So that ordered pair is going to be one, two, one. So I'm going to put in a positive two over here because for that ordered pair, I've got positive two is X. So I'm going to plug in two and I have two plus three Y minus five equals zero. Two minus five is what? Negative three plus three Y equals zero. Add three, add three. 3y equals 3, divide by 3, divide by 3, and y equals 1. So the ordered pair of 2, 1, I can see 1, 2, 1, those two correspond. I know that that's my point of intersection. Oops. 2, 1 is where they overlap. So in that situation, first two numbers, I picked 2 that I knew I could divide by three because to get Y by itself, I'm gonna to have to divide by three. So that was kind of my focus on picking my numbers here. Then once I had those two plotted, I was able to see what I thought would be my intersection point. So then all I did was have to try that point and plug it in and see if it made a true statement. So there's my solution. So this is taking a lot of thinking and going into it, a lot of looking ahead. Um, to, to do this the most efficient and easy way. Now you can always do trial and error and plug in numbers, but notice them, a negative one worked, but if I had zero, that's not gonna work. Um, so my typical negative one, zero, positive one might not work in this situation. So this is where we're having to really kind of expand our thinking, okay? Let's go ahead and look at the next one. The one, yeah, the second one. All right, can I solve either of these for Y? No, I'm not able to solve either of these for Y, so I know I'm gonna to have to deal with tables. Okay, my favorite. Yep. Okay. 3X plus 2Y minus one equals zero. 2X plus 3Y minus four equals zero. Okay, again, when I'm plugging in values, I know I'm gonna have to have something that I'm able to divide by two when I'm working out numbers for my table. And on this one, I'm gonna have to divide by three. Okay, so kind of thinking about that. X, three X plus two Y minus one equals zero and then X, Y. All right. So my first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to test numbers. What if I put in a one here? What is three times one? Three. And what is three minus one? Two. Is two divisible by two? Yes. Hey, one works. Three times one plus two y minus one equals zero. Three plus two y minus one equals zero. So three minus one is two plus two y equals zero. I'm gonna to have to subtract two from each side. Two y equals negative two, divide by two, divide by two, y equals negative one. 
So one, negative one. This is kind of practice and getting you to do things. Now, if you're not writing anything, that's a problem. You should be doing this. The whole the practicing in class is for when you get home to do homework, you know what to do. If I keep writing, you can put my hands up with the base on, right, right, right. The main thing is, is we practice these steps in class for you to be able to do it on your own. All right, so now again, I know I'm gonna to have to multiply my value by three and then subtract one. So what if I put in a negative one? What is three times negative one? Negative three. And negative three minus one is? Negative four. Negative four. Is negative four divisible by two? Yes. Four, I'm gonna use negative one. All right, three times negative one plus two y minus one equals zero. So we said that would be negative three plus two y minus one equals zero. So two y minus four equals zero, add four to each side. And two y equals four, divide by two, divide by two, five equals Yes. No, because no. they would just basically wait, leave you with the same wait, problems. Wait, so, no. If I plug in Z here, what's the problem? Negative three plus negative three equals zero. Negative three minus negative three equals zero. I want to divide negative two. And that was best. Right. And Micah, can you see her? No. I don't, she just left the Zoom. Oh, never mind. Was it become? Positive 10. Positive 10. Where's a positive 10 divided by 2? 5. Negative 3, 5. I didn't have to write a thing down. I just did it in my head. Impressive. Yeah, I did that. Wow. All right. One, two, three. Do we One, still two, use three, four, five? The three, four? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was just putting in the negative three. Okay. So that's notice that if 
you can see where it's going. You don't even have to write every single step out. Yes. Are you talking about one negative one? So there's that one. One, negative one. Negative one, two means I go left one and up two. Nope, start at your origin. Go left one. Up, nope. The origin's right here. So I go left one and up two. <laughs> Yeah. Uh -huh. And then three, yes. negative four. I'm going to go right three. One, two, three. But down I go down four. One, two, three, four. And then we just did negative three, five. You're going to go left. One, two, three, and up. One, two, three, four, five. Uh huh. Oh, whatever. Right here. Okay. So now. Let's look at our next one, 2x plus, uh-oh. Does somebody have a question? Where'd y'all go? Everybody's still there. Okay, something just changed on my screen. I was worried I lost y'all. All right, so the next one, 3x plus 2y minus one equals zero. And, oh, that's what we just did. Y'all <laughs> 2x plus 3y minus 4 equals 0. How about that? Is that better? Yeah. Okay. Now, y'all ready? What do I know I'm going to have to have? What, what is my number that ends up moving over here going to have to be divisible by? 3. Three. So let's think about this for a minute. What is two times one? Two. two. What is two minus four? Negative three. Two Wait, minus two. four. Negative no, two. Is that divisible by three? No. Nope. So then that's not going to work. What about zero? What's two times zero? zero. What's zero minus four? Negative four. But then when it moves over here, it's a positive four. Is that divisible by three? No. Nope. All right. What about a negative two? Yes. Who said yes? <laughs> All right. Somebody said it. Negative two. What's negative two times positive two? Negative four. Negative four. What's a negative four minus four? Negative eight. Negative eight. Is that divisible by three? No. no. All right. So let's think about it. Um, we said that. Let's see, two times one is two minus four. Oh, what about eight? Huh? Six. Six. Eight, six, 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 six. Six. 16 minus four is 12. Six. I'm going to try six. Okay, but six. think about that. If we use eight, that's a pretty big number on the graph, right? Now we may, we'll just have to see. It might um, go out of it. Hold on a second. Oh, duh. Hold on a second. Um, what did we say two times negative one was? Did we do that one? What's two times negative one? Negative, negative two. What's negative two minus four? Negative six. negative six. When I move it, it's a positive six. So we found one. Negative one. So two times negative one plus negative two. Negative two minus four, we said was negative six. I move it over here. It's a positive six. It's six divided by three is two. Zero two. <laughs> so I'll go ahead and we'll put just y over here. So negative one, positive two. We're going to start with that. And if I go negative one, positive two, what have I found? My answer. Do I even need to go any further? When I find my answer, I'm done. Okay, don't keep finding other things to fit in. If you found that the first First one you graph was your solution. Stop. That's your solution. This is still okay. Mm -hmm. So in that one, the firmer we tried was on this line. Now, let's just say for fun. Um, let's think about what that is to have. Um, what can I multiply? 
how to make this be zero? What's two times two? Four. Four, what's four minus four? Zero. Zero, what's zero divided by three? Zero. Zero. So if I put in two, two times two is four, four minus four is zero. So three Y, or zero divided by three is zero. So we said two, zero. So I can start here and go one, two, and there is, so I can kind of see um, one, two, 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 three. So from here, I could go one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three. So just having that one for actually being able to find two points, I could have a slope and I can go ahead and graph my line if I needed to. Okay. So see how all of these things kind of start tying together. If I understand slope and y-intercept, if I have a y-intercept, I can graph just that one point and use my slope. If I have two points, I can calculate my slope to find additional points, okay? So all of these things, hopefully you're kind of remembering because I will tell you, you will see a slope and information like this in geometry next year, okay? So it's not something that you would just learn it this year and you just move on. You're gonna see it again next year. You're gonna see it again in algebra two. So Those are all the maths that you have to have to graduate. You have to do geometry and algebra two to graduate. You may choose not to do anything beyond that, but just know that going ahead and learning this now, it's going to make life so much easier for you next year and the year after. So, oh, so like, when does like the trig and all of that stuff like become, is that college math? So typically algebra two, two usually has a little bit of trig. Yeah. So you started in eighth you started seventh grade you did algebra ninth grade is going to be geometry tenth grade is going to be algebra two and then you can go on and do um pre-calculus calculus you know so it just depends on what you're what you're wanting to do professionally if you decide you want a job that needs that kind of math if you're going to college and you want to go ahead and know learn that kind of math in high school to be able to when you get to college it's easier based on what you're majoring in that's totally everybody's individual thing but you have to have to get a, a high school diploma geometry algebra two so what I want to try to do is try to reinforce the skills that you're going to need to have in the future, okay? Also, if you plan on going to college and you have to take the ACT, well, it's who knows by that point if they'll do away with it, what's not happening with that, who knows? But anyway, I just want you to know how to do these things, okay? Don't just go, hey, I learned it just for this test and I, it's out the door, okay? Because you're gonna see it again. So life will be easier on you the more you practice and learn. All right. Let's look at the last one and activities two. What do you automatically notice about this one? You can um, solve for Y. I can solve for Y. Y is all by itself. I'm not gonna have to calculate and figure out what a number is gonna be, you know, what's gonna be divisible to be able to solve for Y. So I know that it is, okay. So I have negative three X plus Y. Minus two equals zero and four X plus Y plus five equals zero. So my first one, what needs to move? I need to add three X, add two. That means I add three X and add two over here. So Y is equal to three X plus two. What do I need to do to this one? Um, add or subtract 4x and 5. Subtract 4x, subtract 5. And I have y is equal to negative 4x minus 5. What am I going to graph first for my first um, line or my first equation? Zero, two. I'm going to graph 0, 2. That's my y intercept. What is my slope? Over or good. My second one. What's my y intercept? Zero negative five. Zero negative five. What is my slope? Negative four. Negative four. Just oh, I just use my number. Negative four over one. or four over negative one. Four over negative one. Good. 
I like to go ahead and write on both so that way I can see them and I can think about what I'm doing. Am I going up and right, down and left, down and left, down and right, whatever I'm doing. Okay. First, I'm going to graph zero two. Start at my origin. I do not move left or right. I go up two, one, two. There it is. Okay. Now I use my slope of three over one. I'm going to start and go up three, right one. One, two, three, one. Now I'm going to go negative three, negative one. I go back to my original point and go down one, two, three, one. Now, because I like to have more points to connect, I'm going to go ahead and go one, two, three, one here and up, two, three, one here. Makes me a little more comfortable. That way I have more points to connect when I'm graphing. So there I go. There is my first line. Now, one of the things that you can do if you want to is you can label each line. You can name it. I mean, you could write this one is y equals 3x plus 2 if you wanted to see which line is which. Okay, 0, negative 5. Again, I start at my origin. I go down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now I'm going to use my slope of negative 4 over 1. Well, is there any point in me going down four and right one? No, because what is my goal? What am I looking for? I want to intersect. If I start going down and away, I'm going away from my line. I don't want to waste time doing that. So I'm going up four, left one. One, two, three, four, left one. Guess what I have found? I found my solution just by graphing that first. Well, I graphed my y-intercept. Now, if I wanted to continue going, one, two, three, four, one. And then I can see that here is my second line. Okay, so I can see my ordered pair is going to be negative one, negative one is my solution. Okay. Any questions about that? All right, let's turn over and look at page 130. 130 activities three. Okay, now let's look at these for a minute. Okay. There are six on here. You have a whole other second sheet with six grids. Perfect for homework, isn't it? Yay. All six of them? All six of them, but <clears throat> look at number one. Can I solve the top equation? Yes. For y? Yes. Look at the one below it. Could I solve it for y? No. Huh? No. I'm gonna say yes, and I want you to figure out why. <laughs> because you because you can divide it by two. Wait. Look at my second equation. <laughs> divide. Remember how we could divide and multiply to make things opposites or whatever we needed to do? If I divide two x by two, what do I have? X. X. If I have 2y divided by 2, what do I have? Y. If I divide negative 6 by 2, what do I have? Negative 3. Negative three. Uh. So first of all, I can divide my second equation by 2 and then solve for y. No table. Yay. Okay. Look at the second one. Can I solve both for y? Yes. Yeah. Third one, can I solve both for y? Yes. Yep. Fourth one, mm -hmm. fifth. Mm -hmm. What am I going to have to do to the last part of the last one? Wait, can you do the third one? Huh? Can you do the third one? <laughs> one, two, three. This one? Yeah. Yeah, I've got a negative y, but I'm just going to have to change it to a positive y once I've solved and I have y equals mx plus b form. So as long as y is by itself, or if I can divide each part or each term by whatever I need to divide by to get y by itself. So in this one and this one, I can start out by dividing by two, then I can solve for y, okay? So let's look at our time. It is um, 11.44. We get out of here at 12.05. So right now we've got roughly 20 minutes, okay? Wait, can you solve? The sixth one with y equals What can I divide my bottom equation by? Two. I can divide every term by two and get y by itself. Okay. So right now we are working on 
page 130, activities three. So all the rooms can be solved by the I was trying to this one, I can divide the bottom term by two, and then I can solve for y. Then the very last one, same thing. So this is what we're working on right now. If you have questions, let me know so I can come help you. Whatever you do not finish becomes homework. Okay, so your homework for tonight is going to be corrections. So I'll go ahead and write it up here. So if you need to write it down, corrections for lessons 56 and 58. And then we have, this is lesson 59, activities three. That's three on graph paper, okay? So no, no, girls. So just on, on your graph paper. Now, one of the things I will tell you that if you want to, um, I'm gonna borrow this for a minute. You can go ahead. So like for number one, if you, you know, you can write on here if you want to, um, Y intercept and slope of each of your lines. So that way you've got it written on here. I mean, write on here, use the back of it if you want to, to solve your equations. But the main thing I'm looking for is a graph. I want you to put a box or a circle around your intersection point. Circle the ordered pair. If they do not intersect, I want to see your graphs and I want to see that either they're parallel lines or that they are um, graphed on top of each other. Are we going to number them side to side? So um, you can, however you want to number them, just number them. You can either go one, two, three, four, five, six. You can go one, two, three, four, five, six. But just know in the book, across the top, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so in the book, they're just going top row, one, two, three, bottom row, four, five, six. And then you can number them however you want to. Please let me know if I can come help you if you're confused on something and you're not sure what to do. We just talked about how every single one of these I can solve for Y, so that's where you're gonna start out. Solve each equation for Y. Graph your lines, tell your solution. Yes. I don't know if it's really down where it hurts. I never know what I have. Had some in here at one point, but I guess I'm measuring tape that more. <laughs> I guess it's good to tell what's in here. Ah, again. Let's see. Okay. Amount for a tripod. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> Everything but Cliff or Sadie. I could have sworn I had some in here. I'm sorry. Now I'm dumping everything out. Is that a Oh, wait. I'm about to get it. Oh, and I know that hurts when you've got a nail like that. Any questions? Anybody need any help? Just cut it. Start out by solving for y on both of them. Identify your y intercept. Okay. So let's see. Now, um, okay. Do that. Yeah. So think about on that first one. When you solve your first one. What is your y intercept on the first one? And actually, look at that, Chad. So, did you solve? You're solving this one? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Right. Added to. 
So notice on your first one, why is your Y intercept? Let's look at this right here. Zero, three. So yeah. you have that one. Um, if you, um, um, what should that be? Oh, okay, so you changed, yeah. Good deal. Real quick to help with the graph since you're limited on graph space. Let's look at that first one. If I have negative 2x minus y plus 12 equals 0, add 2x, subtract 12. Add 2x, subtract 12. So negative y is equal to 2x minus 12. So now I'm going to have y is equal to negative 2x plus 12. My y intercept is 0, 12. You don't have 12 spaces on your graph, do you? No. So you can count my twos. Okay. But so first y intercept is 3, right? And then second one's y intercept is 3. If I'm looking at my first one, this one right here, the yeah. top one, okay? Do you see how the very top one would end up being my y-intercept is 0, 12? Yeah, but the other one's intercept has a 3. Yeah, it does. But I'm just saying, if you have to graph, but you've got to graph this one first. And so if I graph 0, 12, that means I'm going 0 up this way, 12. Well, even this graph doesn't have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. It would be all the way up here. I think yours has 6. What would be a solution? Count by, two. Count by twos. Two. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. So that would be negative 2, negative 4, negative 6, negative 8, negative 10, negative 12. This way, I would have to have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, negative 2, negative 4, negative 6, negative 8, negative 10, negative 12. Now, what I've got to be careful of, though, is when I'm graphing this, if my y-intercept is 0, 12, 0, 12. Now, when I do my slope, m is negative 2 over 1, which is also 2 over negative 1. Because I am dealing, because I've, I've said that each unit is two units, when I go down two from here, I'm actually just going down one because I'm going from 12 to 10. That's the same as going down two, okay? And when I go to the right one, I only go a half, okay? So when I go down two, now I go a half, down two, now I go a half, okay? Mm -hmm. So just be careful when you're graphing, you can count by twos on your grid, but you're gonna have to be careful when you're using your slope and remember that you're going down, each unit is two, okay? So then we'll go ahead and look at this one as a one, two, and one, two. One, so my line is gonna look like this. Roughly. My second one, we said 2x plus 2y minus 6 equals 0. Said I want to divide by 2. Divide by 2. So I have x plus y minus 3 equals 0. Subtract x, add 3. Subtract x, add 3. y equals negative x plus 3. So now on this one, my y intercept is going to be 0, 3. So I'm going to have to be super careful. So zero, I know zero, three is going to be right there between two and four. M equals negative one, which is negative one over positive one or one over negative one. So remember my whole goal is I'm trying to get to where I can intersect. So I'm going to go, um, let's just go down one, right one. So down one, right one. Down one, hold up. Right one, down one, right one, down one, right one. So I'm going to have to be super careful where my intersection point is. Okay. Or if you have graph paper and you want to use a whole big regular size graph, do that. Okay. But the first thing is you're solving for y.
So remember, if you're going down two, because each of these count as two, so going down two is actually right there. Now go a halfway. There you go. Oh, oh, yeah, I see that. Yeah, I see so if you um if you move this one then um let's see so you've got here you had negative y equals x minus 10 okay but then i've got to change it to positive y okay so look right here Go ahead and keep that negative sign with y. So now put positive y. Now, how did you move? What sign is in front of this x? No, what is in front of the x? So what is right now? It's positive, so I have to subtract it to move it. If there's no sign, it's a positive, so subtract it. There we go. So now, positive y is going to be in front of x. Uh-huh, and what kind of 10? There you go. Yeah. Well, I think it's... Yeah. I kind of did it. Those ones I Either it's your backwards or mine. So I'm going to start at zero and go, uh-huh. And my slope is negative one, one. So now I've got to remember, I'm going down halves. Okay, nope, because that would be going down two. Remember, I've got to go down half. And go down half, nope, and then over half. Down half, over half, down half, over half, down half, over half. That's why we gotta keep on going a lot, don't we? Down, 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 down. Nine. <laughs> What you got? This one not is nine, so does that mean there's not nine spaces? So this okay. So what is your what is your intercept for the other one? I haven't done it yet. Okay, so you've got negative six. Mm -hmm. The only thing is, is then the slopes may be a challenge because, um, mm, I tell you what, who has a piece of regular graph paper that I, I can do. see about copying? Do you want to? <laughs> so one of the things that you could do, I think that I'll see which one shows up better, the blue or the green. Um, okay, so what I'm trying to figure out is, on the second one, you've got a y intercept of 0, 9, and then you have 0, negative 6. I could count by threes, but then my slope is a 1. So realistically, these grid squares may not work very well for those. You may have to use regular graph paper. Who would need bigger graph paper? Who does not have graph paper and needs me to make copies of these? OK, I'll make a few copies of these. I'll be right back. And I'll make some. Let's see which one we need Yeah, I got it. Can I understand? <laughs> I don't understand. Oh, so it is right. Yeah. Okay. So that's I think I'm backwards. I don't know. 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 And then so you want to write this and say, hey, wait, no, so so I did it actually. I am? <laughs> okay, so this whole space is this is so hard. What? So Wait. Six. 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 Six.
so y'all can print them, all right? Okay, so whatever you did not finish on page 130 is homework. If you have questions, please let me know. Um, on Thursday, corrections are due. Homework, if you did not turn it in today, if you want, if yours is all correct and you wanna go ahead and turn it in, turn it in. If not, I will take it. Um, I will take it. Um, All right. Thank you, Micah. See you Thursday. Bye, Micah. All right. Um,